Welcome players to another drawing tutorial, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw the very first air boss in Cuphead, Hildeberg. Alright guys, get your pencil and paper, and let's get started with this tutorial. Step 1. Sketching Hildeberg's head and face. Go ahead and sketch a medium sized circle on the upper part of your paper. Make sure you leave enough room for the body and the cloud. Now, make sure when you are sketching the circle that you are compensating for the hair, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So make sure that your circle is not too big, but big enough to fit those four essential facial features. Once you're done sketching the circle, go ahead and make a center line in the middle. This is going to help us map out where we're going to place our eyes, mouth, and nose. Don't worry, you can be as rough as possible. This is a rough sketch after all, so neatness is not necessary here. Now we're going to make our eyes and nose line. Go towards the bottom of the paper and make a line across the circle. Once you're done with the two lines, you will see that we have separated our head into four tiles. The right tiles are going to be bigger than the left tiles. Once we have our two face lines, let's go ahead and get started with some facial features, starting off with the mouth. Begin with drawing a long, medium-sized jelly bean shape. Make sure it fills the bottom half of the circle. Now, let's go ahead and make the eyes. Make two medium-sized circles. For the right tile, it's just going to be in the middle. For the left eye, it's going to be touching the left side of the circle. Now, the left eye is going to be smaller than our right eye. This reason because we're going to make the nose on the left side. Now let's go ahead and make the nose. Start at the bottom of the left eye and make a straight slanted pointy nose. Kind of like a really long traffic cone. Make sure the bottom line of the nose does not touch the mouth, but ends near it. Now let's go ahead and add some expression to Hildeberg with two droopy lines that are going to represent an evil and angry expression. The right line is going to be bigger than the left line. Now we're going to go ahead and draw her hair. Start off with her widow's peak, which is going to be separated by the center line. And then start off that center line and make the rest of the hair which consists of a cliff, a little bump right there, and then going all the way down to the bottom of the circle. Now that we're done with our Betty Boop-like hair, we're going to clean up a little bit with our sketch. This is where you can erase the eye and center lines and any intersecting lines that don't need to be there. But don't worry, you don't have to be perfectly neat. This is still a rough sketch. For the right eye only, go ahead and make a cheek and erase the bottom half of that circle. Now let's go ahead and make the eyelid. It's going to be curving at the bottom. And in the middle, go ahead and make a Pac-Man pupil. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the left eye. But this Pac-Man eye is going to be up against the right side of the circle. Go ahead and shade those eyes in. And make sure you sharpen the lines. In. Make three little lines to represent eyelashes on the sides of the circles. Make a little line right there in the middle of the forehead.
Now for the mouth, go ahead and make two lines separated from each other. And it's going to make three nice big teeth right there. We're pretty much done with the face. Now let's go ahead and make the hair piece. Start off with a base and then a little pig right there and make a vase-like shape jutting outwards at a slanted angle. On top, sketch out a small circle and a little pole on top. And on the sides, go ahead and sketch out an arrow. Go ahead and erase any intersecting lines like so. Now we're going to go ahead and make the body. Start off with her dress by making a circle that is going to be touching her mouth. Now Hildeberg has really noodly arms that represent that rubber hose era of animation style. So make sure that they're stretchy and long. Now we're going to go ahead and make her rings or gauntlets if you will. Make a medium sized oval. Let's sketch out the bottom of her hand. Now her hand consists of only three fingers. Let's start off with the thumb. Make a fat little oval type shape right there. Now her two other fingers are going to be long. Now I made a bottom line to kind of separate the fingers to make them easier to make. Now her third finger is going to be longer than the middle finger. Make sure the fingers have some nice smooth and curvy lines. And go ahead and erase that bottom line if you made it. Now let's make her body, which is going to consist of a round cylinder type shape. It's going to curve on the left side and then bulge out at the right. Go ahead and make the second circle, which is going to be her second shoulder. Now at the bottom, we're going to make the skirt. Start off with an egg-like shape that's going to be pointing to the left. to be longer at a drooping position like I said before and pretty much the same heel shape that we use for the left leg. Now let's get started with that cloud. We want to add a little bit of an environment to our Hildeberg so let's go ahead and make a very simple poofy cloud. 
Now, you want to make sure that the character is actually there on the environment, and making sure that it has somewhat of an effect. What I mean by this, we're going to go ahead and make some clouds that are going to be kind of deforming as she's sitting on them. Like so, you can see that her foot is going to be making a little bunch of poofs in the cloud. Make some additional detailing right there, but not too much, we want to keep it nice, clean, and simple. And to finish off the sketch, let's go ahead and make her right arm, which is going to consist of a small little noodle, a circle gauntlet like last time. Her hand is going to consist of three fingers. Now her hand this time is going to be consisting of four fingers instead of three. The thumb is going to be resting on the cloud just like the two fingers in the middle, but the pinky is going to be jutting outwards, not touching the cloud. So kind of clean it up a little bit, make the rest of the gauntlet at the bottom, sharpen your lines if you need to, because now we're going to be getting into the Sharpie tracing portion of the drawing. There's an overview of the sketch, pause if you need to. Now when outlining Hildeberg, I took a fine point sharpie, which you can get them anywhere. It will also be listed along with the other materials down below in the description. So be very methodical and slow when you're tracing a drawing. This is permanent marker after all, so if you make a mistake, it's permanent. So make sure you're very slow in this process. Now for some drawings in the future when you're tracing them, you might have lines that are pretty skinny. I would recommend a ultra fine point sharpie, but if you don't have that I would just be really careful when making those very skinny lines. All colors that I use in this drawing tutorial are going to be listed in the description below, so make sure you take a look there before coloring. I use a mahogany colored pencil to draw the two shoulder circles and her hair. If you don't have a mahogany colored pencil, that's fine, just substitute it with a red colored pencil, but make sure that you are using a darker shade when coloring the shoulders and the hair. When I color anything, I start off with a medium shade base tone, and then work my way up until I get a shade that I want. So I want to keep the hair and the shoulders a kind of a pale but dark type of red. I don't want it too bright, so I'm just going to play with it and work until I get that shade. Now for her body, I used a regular red colored pencil. Now for the upper part of the body, it's going to use a simple medium type shade. Make sure that you're filling everything up. Now the beauty of tracing with Sharpie and erasing the pencil lines is that you create a type of a coloring book picture. So it's going to be easier and more simple to color. Now for the stripe at the bottom, we're going to use a brighter red. Make sure you're filling everything up, but also be patient when coloring as well. You don't want to go too hard because you'll get some rough, really bright um, colored pencil lines. You can see right there, there's a lot of hard lines here and there. You don't want to really put a lot of pressure on your paper because you could also rip it and just make everything too shiny and bright. Now at the bottom, I'm still using the regular red colored pencil, but I'm using a very light base tone for her skirt. Make 
make sure you color around the edges, be really careful, you don't want to go outside the lines, just like a coloring book. Now with the beauty of this, if you make a mistake, say if you uh, color the cloud, it's fine, just take an eraser to it. Um, this will only work with, of course, um, light colored pencil lines. If it's too dark, of course, it's you can erase it as much as you want, but it will still be there. Now for the insides, we're going to go ahead and color kind of a salmon pink, but still with the red colored pencil. You don't want to make it too pale, so add a little bit of color here and there, but make sure that it's still a light base tone for the skirt. Now that we've finished her dress, let's go ahead and get that mahogany colored pencil if you still have it. Or like I said, you can use the red colored pencil, but make sure that you are uh, dark around the hair. Make sure that you're pretty careful with this section of the drawing. You don't want to mark her face with the mahogany or red colored pencil because her skin is going to be pink and not red. Now this is optional. You can take a fine point or ultra fine point Sharpie and make a little bit of a shine for her eyelids. Now we're going to go ahead and use a pink. Again, start off with a light base tone. Just work your way up. You don't want to make it too bright, but you don't want to make it to where you know, she's lifeless. color around the edges and also the facial features. Now I wouldn't really recommend going over the sharpie lines because the sharpie will expose the colored pencils and kind of make it look really messy. But that's fine if you do, just go ahead and reinforce some more sharpie outlines but make sure you don't make it really thick. Apply that to everywhere except for her mouth and her eyelids and her eyes. Just give off a really nice shade of pink. Once you're done coloring the skin, for the eyelids use a regular red colored pencil and color outside the stripe. And for the little shine stripes themselves, we're going to use a light red shade base tone. Or if you want, you can always keep them white. It doesn't really matter. But I like adding shines to the eyelids. It gives that extra vibe of the rubber hose era of animation. So there we go, we completed the eyelids. Let's go ahead and finish off the pink by coloring her arms. We're going to use that same base tone strategy that we use for her face with the pink. Just give it off a nice medium shade, not too bright but not too pale and lifeless. Color her feet, but don't color uh, the bottom of her feet that are going to be her heels. Which are, we're going to color them with a, a medium red base tone. Like so. Next up is going to be Hildeberg's Ring Gauntlets. Go ahead and use a yellow or a golden yellow color pencil if you have it to outline the circle and then fill it in with a light shade. We're going to use that same technique for Hildeberg's hairpiece. To color the hairpiece use a light brown. For the peg it's going to be a darker shade. For the base it's going to be a light shade as well for the pole and the circle, but for the arrow it's going to use a darker shade. 
and for the arrow head and the back part of the arrow, use that same technique that we use for the golden ring gauntlets, like so. Let's add some shading techniques, starting off with the face. Since the face is pink, we're going to use a darker shade of pink. We're going to color around the nose, the mouth, the side of the head, underneath the eyebrows, in between the widow's peak and the cheeks. This is really going to make the face and the whole drawing really pop. Do the same for her arms. As well as her feet and legs. Make sure you're also careful with this process. Make sure you're adding some shading to indicate that there's a shadow casting by the from the skirt this is going to be the darkest shade of pink in the drawing now for the body let's use a darker shade of red just use a skinny shadow on the side of her body and also the left side with the skirt. Make sure the shading is consistent. We want to make sure that it's lining up with the entire body. Instead of shading the hair, I'm just coloring it a little bit darker. Now for the hairpiece, use a darker shade of brown on the sides. That's pretty much it for the hairpiece. Just make sure you use a skinny little shadow right there. Now when shading the cloud, go ahead and use a light gray. We're going to make a very wavy line for the bottom of the cloud. Like I said, you want to use a light shade. You don't want to use it too dark. Make sure you are staying in with the outside the lines. You don't want to intercept the legs with the gray and smudge the pink with a neutral color. You don't want to do that. And we're going to do the same with um, the legs and also her skirt as well. And make sure you also do it for the edges of the clouds. Just make sure you are keeping a consistent shade tone. You don't want one section to be darker or lighter than the other. So you want to try to be as consistent as possible. But don't worry, you can mess up. Art is trial and error after all. And we're going to do the same for the gloves as well. Make sure you're shading around the hands and the fingers.
All that is left to do is to clean up the drawing. And now we have a completed drawing of Hildeberg from the game Cuphead Don't Deal with a Devil. I really like making this. I liked how it utilizes different shades of red and pink, and that her overall style is based on the classic cartoon character Betty Boop. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful, and recommend any other villains from Cuphead that you want to see drawn in this channel, and I'll teach you how to do so. Alright guys, see you later.